Hi guys, welcome to Escape Studios Tips and Tricks. I'm Ash and today I'm going to show you how to add transparency maps into Maya's SSS shaders. Okay, so we're in Maya and let's say you want to add transparency to subsurface scattering shaders. Now, obviously if you're using subsurface scattering, you're probably going to have quite a complicated texture system set up. But I'm going to show you this on something very, very simple just so that you understand the technique. Because it's a little bit convoluted, but it works out in the end. So I'm just building a quick scene with some lights. Obviously, for this to work, we would need final gather switched on, which it is. We'd need shadow switched on, which it is. I've got two very simple cubes. Make sure to render. I will bump my render settings up. I'm going to take ray tracing down just to show you this. Okay, so this is nice and simple. And this cube here is going to be what I add the transparency to. Now, now we're going to spend a lot of time in the hypershade. So let's open up our hypershade. Inside the hypershade, I'm going to search fast, and then I'm going to choose the shader, M-I-S-S -S underscore fast underscore shader underscore X, which gives us these three nodes here. We don't need all of them. We're just going to focus on the shader node for now. So I'm in my shader node. The first thing I'm going to do is put all of the weights at one. So diffused front and back, I'm going to put the weight at one. Now, just before I started this, I opened up Photoshop and I did a UV snapshot of that cube. I just made a very, very simple target with pure white and pure black elements just to make a transparency map, a very simple one. I then saved it out. I did not save it with an alpha channel. It doesn't seem to work if you save your transparency map with an alpha channel. So your transparency map exists in the RGB space. Don't save it with an alpha. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into the front and back SSS weights. So I've made a file node in my file node. I'm going to choose that file. You can see it. It's almost like a, a crappy dice. It's just a simple thing so you get the gist of what's going on. I'm going to select my file node. I'm going to turn the filter type to off. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to now click alpha is luminance, even though this doesn't have an alpha. I know it's a bit weird but it's just the way it works. Now I'll go back to my shader, and instead of making that all again, I'm just gonna drag file one into back SSS weight, so the same file is in the front and the back SSS weight. Now I need to create something to put in the diffuse shader. So back in my hypershade, I'm just gonna search for X because I need Mia Material X passes. There she is. I need to plug the same file node into the transparency. Just be aware, for some reason, Maya doesn't like it if you create a file node via the attribute editor. So I'm gonna create a file node from scratch by searching file. I'm gonna put exactly the same file in. This one, I'm not going to click alpha is luminance. This file node, I turn the filter off. I do not click alpha is luminance in this one. Now I'll go back to my mere material X passes. I will drag that file into transparency. And at the top, just make sure your color is totally black. So let's tidy this up just a little bit. I wanna plug now this mere material X passes into the fast. So I'll select the fast shader, middle click on me and material X passes, drag and drop it into diffuse shader. You'll see there's a big difference now in the thumbnail. I'm just gonna click in out connection so you can see. And the next thing to do is to put that on my cube. So there we go, I've dragged and dropped that now onto my cube and I'm gonna hit render. And there you have it folks, a cube that has subsurface scattering on it but also has transparency. So obviously you'd probably be doing a much more complicated texture. You'd be perhaps making some skin or a creature that you'd need this for. But I've kept this example simple just so you understand the technique. Uh, I'm gonna save that image. I'm just gonna go into my fast shader Scroll down to samples and let's put them up at 128. Render that again. You can see that looks a little bit better. Still doesn't look entirely like subsurface scattering, so I'm gonna jump into my Mia Material X passes and I'm gonna bring the glossiness down a little bit. I've gone half, that's probably too much, but I'll render that again. There you go, that looks a lot more like it, doesn't it? You can tell it's working because the render time's gone up quite a bit. I reckon that might be a bit too much, so I'm just gonna maybe, yeah, three quarters-ish. Hit render, that looks more like it, I think. So you can see now we've got a really nice SSS effect there. So it's a little bit convoluted, but the results speak for themselves. It obviously works, and it doesn't really matter how you get the effect. All that matters is the effect looks good at the end, and this obviously does. So that tip comes courtesy of John Gresco, who's one of our studio assistants. The link to his showreel is in the description of this video, and I urge you to check it out. He's a really, really talented guy, and he's done some amazing work while he's been with us. Also, if you have any tips or tricks you want to share, feel free to drop me an email at ashley.miles at escapestudios.com and I'll make them into a tips and tricks video. And don't forget, there's only a couple of weeks left now to the VFX Festival. The last couple of tickets are still on sale, so if you want to come, 
there is a chance. Uh, we've got workshops, we've got talks, we've got panel debates, we've got screenings, including an exclusive screening of a behind the scenes of Gravity, which Framestore are going to do for us. It looks incredible. So uh, if you can, come and visit us in real life. We'll have loads of fun. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hit subscribe now, and I'll see you all next week.